Yeah, I don't want to go to jail for anything. I'm much too, like, weak. And you're pretty. You are listening to the Stand Up Dads Podcast. This is heck of boring. Yeah, it is. Let's try again. This is Rob, and Mike is not here today, because... You know what? That's fucked up. I can't do that to him. <laughs> uh, he doesn't listen to these anyway. Okay, this is Stand Up Dads. This is Rob, and Mike is not with us today. He had to go somewhere to handle something very important. But today I have a guest host, Mo Green, and he is from the Dad Hard with a Podcast Show. Thank you very much for coming. Thank you for having me, man. I appreciate it. I love that name. It's like Die Hard with a Vengeance. It's beautiful. That's exactly where I took it from. One of my favorite movies, and and the artwork for the pod is actually the Die Hard with a Vengeance movie poster, which is fantastic. It's very cool. So yeah, you've been doing a podcast for a little over about a year. Just just under a year. Uh, yep. My daughter just turned one last week. As a matter of fact, congratulations. Um, thank you very much. And uh, I, I started it about six weeks after she was born, and I've been doing it ever since. So we're uh, we're about almost at the year mark. September will mark the year mark. I remember at six weeks, I didn't have time to like do shit, let alone start <laughs> up a new show. So what made you decide to do it then? So I, I've been a musician most of my life, uh -huh. um, specifically a, a, a rap artist, uh, okay. like a, a rapper, a writer, poet. I've always had like a creative mechanism in my life. Mm -hmm. And for a long time, once I stopped doing music actively, you know, I've kind of been searching for a, a creative outlet to do Got something. It. Love podcasts. And one day, you know, when my daughter was born, uh, something in my brain just kind of clicked and changed. And, and it really, I say that I had this kind of, this Jesus moment where it felt mm -hmm. like I got baptized, even yeah. though I'm Jewish. But, um, <laughs> uh, uh, and, uh, and it just changed in me. And I was like, you know what? I want to help other dads because when I was going through the pregnancy and pre fatherhood, there wasn't a lot of content that was out there that was yeah. relatable that I, I could get down with. So I was like, you know what? Fuck it. I'm, what if I did this? Yeah. And I went to my wife and my wife is one of the most critical people of my ideas that I have <laughs> ever heard. And when she said it was a good idea, I was like, whoa, I might have something here. Was it mainly to get you out of her way? I, you know what? <laughs> probably, probably, probably. I mean, I started it mainly because I didn't know what the fuck I was doing. It was more, I actually do this to see if I can get better based on other people's mistakes. And if someone else can learn from it, great. But selfishly, I'm doing it for myself. I'm all about it. That, that's, that's why I talk to a different dad on every, on every episode, because I let them teach me what to do. And then I'm like, oh, cool. Awesome. Now I have a little bit more knowledge of what I should be doing. And that's tough. How do you find guests? I happen to know just know a lot of people uh you know what i mean like i just happen to know a lot of people and and um a lot of my a lot of my friends and, and guys that i know uh around are all having kids kind of at the same time we're all uh, you know a few months apart a couple of years apart etc um and i also just happen to know a lot of people that do really cool stuff and you know uh one of my one of my good friends from college was an olympic wrestler who is on and now has like devoted his life to uh, childhood physical literacy. Um, so he was, he's been on the show. I, you know, um, the stylist for the, the roots, the band on the tonight show uh -huh. and, you know, famous before them, but obviously, you know, he happens to be a friend of mine cause I used awesome. to work in fashion. And so, you know, he's been on and I just, I just happen to know a lot of guys and I, I just want to try to get as many different insights and experiences outside of fatherhood mm -hmm. that I can because you bring your outside experiences into the fatherhood light, but we all have the same experiences within fatherhood. Mm -hmm. So even though we're all different, we all go through the same shit when it comes to being a dad. And that's yep. kind of the whole center of the, uh, of the concept of the show. Cool. Yeah. I was listening to your most recent episode where your wife was your guest. Yes. You guys were recapping, you know, having that first kid. And it was funny just listening to you guys talk about it. Like everything's still an adventure. Because yeah. my kid's seven, and it's like, ah, oh, fuck this again. So <laughs> I was like, oh, I miss that. But I honestly, like my kid, I didn't get, I mean, obviously there's an attachment to the kid, but I, until my kid turned about six months, he, to me, he was just kind of like a cross between a new pet and a shitty roommate. <laughs> because 
<laughs> they don't do shit. And it's yes. just like a big responsibility and there's not a connection. I mean, obviously my wife had a good connection with him because she was with him all the time. And also I was working, but at like around six months, you, you could see this little spark and it's like, oh, okay, there he is. And then suddenly yeah. it's like, okay, I'm in. Not that I yeah. wasn't in before, but yeah, it's just. No, I got you for sure. But you actually think this has got to get better, right? Yeah. You know, I, 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 I ask, I ask guys that are, that are ahead of me. I'm like, yo, like, when what age is like the easiest you know i've talked to guys that have kids that are you know 15 and they're like they're like uh it's whatever age they're at is the hardest age so like if you think that it gets easier from here it mm -hmm. just continues to get harder and harder and harder because it compiles on itself you know what i mean yeah. whatever they were yesterday was easier so. <laughs> yes yeah, absolutely I'm always new but uh, i don't know and you just had the first birthday did you go through all the did you make the mistake of making a big to-do for it well, so luckily for mm -hmm. that, we are currently dealing with a worldwide pandemic, which has mm -hmm. everybody locked down and limiting, automatically limiting the amount of people that you can see at one time, right? So yeah. what we did is we actually, um, instead of doing one big hoopla, we actually split it into a two-part series, mm -hmm. uh, essentially, where we did something with our family, uh, like our immediate family, mom, uh, you know, parents, uh, you know, uh, uh, my wife's brother, mm -hmm. um, and a close family friend. Um, we did something with them on on her actual birthday, and then we decided that it was a good idea to, you know, see people in person for once in yeah. the last six months, and invited like a bunch of friends out to um, Prospect Park here in Brooklyn, where uh, we had a, a bigger to do. It was all stressful nonetheless, you know sure. what I mean? And, and and she'll never remember it. It's really no. like, you know, it's really for us to look at her and be like, oh, she may know that she's special today or something like that, possibly. They're but just happy because they can eat cake with their hands. I mean, and <laughs> make that big fucking mess. I remember when he turned one and everyone, you know, reading stuff about it. And there's like, apparently that was a big rite of passage because I guess a pretty big percentage of kids didn't make it to one back in the day. <laughs> Back when you had 12 kids, I can't even imagine. People were like, like wait, wait, this one didn't make it to one. Yes. Now that's yeah. one less mouth to feed. <laughs> Jesus, Seriously? that sounds terrible. God, I'm sorry. <laughs> I waited till I was 40 to have it. Oh, wow. So, yeah, if that one didn't make it, I wasn't trying again. <laughs> Listen, I dig you. <laughs> but yeah, I was looking up around, you know, because I forgot about that first year. I forgot about a lot of the young stuff because, you know, you've been so... It's just like your friends say, the toughest or the toughest time is whatever they are now, because it's always something new we got to deal with, especially now with all the COVID stuff. Yep. You know, you're stuck with these kids all the time. And I take for granted that, hey, you're going to be gone a few hours every day and I don't got to worry about this. And then it's like, what do I do now? What do I do now? Right. Yeah. So uh, listening to you, I was like, I can't remember any of that. So I was looking up tips from people about first year of parenthood that got them through or not cool. even that got them through, but stuff. I found an article. I'll post a link in the show notes. Uh, first year of parenthood, 20 things parents experience that they aren't prepared for. And I'm like, it's only 20. But is it, right? is it not everything? Did you have a big one that stuck out? I mean, not from this, but just in general. You know, so I, I mean, and, and I mean, it really is, was my, was my wife's experience, but you know, it was the, probably the most gut wrenching and most difficult thing to watch from my side because mm -hmm. there's nothing I could do about it. Mm -hmm. um, but you know, everybody, breastfeeding is always a big thing that I talk about a lot on, on my pod because, mm -hmm. uh, you know, they lead you to believe, you know, you go to these classes, you read these books and they lead you to believe that it's all sunshines and rainbows and like the baby naturally knows exactly what to do. And it's just like, not like that. I mean, for some people, maybe it is great, sure. you know, awesome. Bravo to them. I, I wish that was you know, our circumstance, but like it, that was the thing that kind of shocked me the most is like how difficult that process is and how difficult or how much that difficulty weighs on both partners individually, yeah. but also like on the relationship as a whole, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. That was kind of my biggest part. That was probably like my biggest surprising thing that I wasn't prepared for. So did your kid latch on ever or... <laughs> She really didn't. She was actually born with a tongue tie. Similar. So she, really? Yeah. And they had to and, snip underneath and yeah. Oh, I got it. And a they great gave story us the scissors. Oh, they, give me to it. Oh, they, they gave you the scissors? They well, they said we tossed scissors. these. So he's like, do you want these? I'm like, sure. I'll take oh, them. Oh man. I, w I would have kept those, put them Hell in a yeah. room, framed them, put them in a room. They no, didn't we use that. them in our little first aid kit. <laughs> That's Good amazing. scissors. 
But so um, what happened with yours? Did they fuck it up? No, they, no, they didn't fuck it up. They fucked me up for life. Like, mm. I'll never be able to get this image out of my head because the doctor's like, yeah, don't worry. We're going to snip it. It's going to ooze a little bit. It's just oh. going to ooze a little bit. And I was like, oh, okay, cool. Fine. Oozing little pus, little pus. All of a sudden he snips it. And this, and, and my daughter, who's like seven days old, looks like she just went 12 rounds with Mike Tyson oh. and blood fit everywhere. I'm like, what the fuck is going on? Like, I didn't have that experience. <laughs> He went too deep, uh, I'm guessing. I, I yeah, listen. I, I don't know what he did. It, it worked apparently, so she's yeah. fine. But like, it, it, I was like, ooze a little bit. This girl looks like she just got out of a UFC fight. Yeah. Well, shoot. Okay, you had a girl. I had a boy, and I did not want to snip him. No. But my wife was like, he's getting circumcised. I was like, shit, I don't want to do this. But at the hospital, he was born. Like, okay, I need your assistance. And I'm like, what? You don't just take him away and do this. So I had to go in there. And they're like, okay, here's what you're going to do. They gave me like a little, like a half and half little thing that they put in diners. It was full oh of like God. sugar water, like a simple syrup. Like, uh-huh. okay, what you're going to do is you're going to dip this pacifier in this. And he was just like two days old. You're going to dip this pacifier and stick it in his mouth. And apparently something about that, all that sugar just knocks him out, which makes no sense. Or they're just full of shit. Oh, yeah. Or they're just drugging your kid. Yeah. And then I'm watching as they just mutilate my kid's dick. Oh and I'm like, God. and my wife is like, oh God, I can't. I'm like, no, you wanted this. You fucking watch. <laughs> and, yeah, you're going to watch. You're going to sit there. And, and everything went play. fine, but oh God. But of course now seeing how nasty my kid is and doesn't clean his shit, it's probably a good thing that we did. But go to that list. So I'm just going to pick a couple. First thing that parents experience that they aren't prepared for is all those surprise costs. I think everyone okay. thinks they're ready for that. Always something. That's true. It's always, it's always something. And even, even after that first year, it still is always something. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I mean, even, yeah, when they get older, it's even worse. It's like now it's sports or now it's, well, now it's not because it's COVID. This one seems stupid. Your relationship may change. Well, I mean, that's an obvious one to me. Exactly. You know I mean? To me, like, it's like, yeah, I've got this shitty roommate slash pet here. Right. And you're pissed off all the time. Yeah. Back to the breastfeeding. Yeah. My kid didn't latch and my wife is always pumping. And yep. she always felt resentment that she wasn't mm-hmm. getting that bonding time, mm-hmm. but she still had to pump all the time. And I'm an asshole. I see boobs. I go, <laughs> you know, and she's just in such a grouchy mood. <laughs> Man, she did not like to be messed with around then. So oh, I, I, I can imagine as such, you know what I mean? It's oh, like man. Uh, and it, it's, yeah. with us, with us, it was always like, she was always like, I get, I have to do all the work and you get to feed her. You know, like it's just, it, it was uh, all around. That's just terrible. But anybody that doesn't think your relationship is going to change once you have a kid you're is, an idiot. yeah, exactly. You're, you're very, very dumb because and it, it, good it changes luck. a lot. Exactly. Yeah. And, exactly. You know, and so it's funny because I was at a little gathering a couple of weeks ago and I met someone I, you know, knew from high school and I hadn't seen her in years and her kids. And again, I waited till I was 40. She had them when she was young. Her kids are both now off to college. And she was talking about how the biggest surprise was, oh, I like my husband now. So <laughs> just having the kid out. So yeah, it, I think it's just you're so focused on them that you don't have a chance to, you know, so if you yeah. stick it out, it may actually come back to what, you know, you remember what you liked about these people. Yeah, that's true. Right now, I don't think my wife could name what she liked about me. <laughs> but, Listen, you're preaching to the choir over here. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's like, why are you here? <laughs> I don't know. And this next one again, another dumb one. Time disappears, of course. When I mean, you wake up, you go to bed, yeah. you're like, what the fuck happened today? Yeah. Yeah. Going out's a nightmare because you got to lug around all this shit. Yes. Little to no sleep. And I think it's one of those things you think you're prepared for it. But I remember the first night we took our kid home, it was the longest night of my life. Yeah, because it probably lasted four days. That night probably was four days long. I just, I remember thinking, is this going to be like this all the fucking time? I can't do this. And we were stupid. We didn't take shifts. We both would get up at the same time. And Oh, you got to do the shift. I know. We learned that after oh. two days because yeah. we, we were going to kill somebody. <laughs> I mean, did, how did that work with you guys your first night? L- luckily, listen, luckily we were, my daughter's never been a problem sleeping. You know, she, we also, I've, I was also lucky enough to be a part of a, um, there's this electronic bass net, like automatic rocket called uh-huh. the Snoo. That, right? I was lucky to have um, a friend that got it as a gift when he had his kid and then passed it to another one of nice. our friends. He then passed it to me. 
And that was very helpful. But my daughter's never really had an issue sleeping. So she's a lot like her dad. Um, you know, she, she likes to sleep. And uh, there are parents work, everywhere saying, shit. fuck you right now. <laughs> yeah. yeah, dude. yeah. Dude, no question. People, dads get so mad at me all the time. They're like, what do you mean she just sleeps all the time? What are you talking about? I'm like, listen, I don't know, whatever. But we had, because she had the tongue tie, she lost so much weight in that first week of her life that like we had to feed her like every two hours. Sure. So we went on like, we went on a straight shift plan where I, like my wife would go to sleep like nine, eight or nine o'clock. Then I would take all, you know, I would just be up from that point until like four or six in the morning. Mm -hmm. And then we'd switch. Sure. And my in-laws also live across the street. So oh, they also came over, which was uh, the biggest help of, that, of my life. Yeah. Our in-laws were two hours away. So we were on our own, yeah. Yeah. but yeah. Well, the good thing was, well, good thing, bad thing. My kid didn't end up eating. So we had to put him on a feeding tube, which oh, wow. sucked. Yes. But at the same time, all you had to do was plug him in and he was all good for the night. So he never got hungry in the middle of the night, but you had to so deal what, with does it automatically, Does it just automatically like feed him? So It's like an IV it. bag with okay. milk or formula or a mix and it goes in through his nose. And that's oh, the worst part is shoving that thing in because yeah, oh, it's just awful. But yeah, we never really had to worry about him waking up in the middle of the night after a month or so because we had to go in the feeding tube. Jesus. Yeah, but I don't know. It all works out. What was the, what, what was the deal with that? Was it was it related to the tongue tie or just he just didn't? no idea? We still and he's still a shitty eater. Really? But well, yeah, we'll get there. I mean, of all the things that could be wrong with him, I'll take shitty eater. So hundred <laughs> percent anytime because anytime I see a kid that's have it that has it rough, I just I don't think it was this way before I had a kid. I didn't really didn't I was an asshole. Well I still am, but before having a kid, just like eh, someone else's problem. Now it's like no, oh I agree. man. Yeah. Okay, so you changed too. Yeah. No, oh dude, hundred percent. My whole like I, I like never really like cared about like kids or what was wrong. Mm -hmm. I never knew anything about what could go wrong and anything like that and now i'm just like geez like i you know my biggest thing with this pandemic is that i feel so bad for parents that have kids mm -hmm. that are like four five six that are just learning how to be social and like mm -hmm. really need that socialization really need to be outside and they just can't like I, I, my, like I think about them every day and I don't really know any of them, but like, I, I, I think about them all the time. Like to God, I feel so bad for the, you know, like, and I never would have thought twice about that before, yeah. you know? Well, as the parent of a seven year old, they definitely, he's going feral a little bit because yeah. like all the I social stuff he learned is gone. Yeah. I, I can't imagine. I don't know. Let's see. They talk about, you'll make mistakes again. I think we all know that, but I don't think we realize how many. Yeah. You know what? But but you know what? They're not mistakes. You know, I don't think they're mistakes. Oh, it's a, it's mistakes. a learning. It's a learning experience. It is a learning experience. That's what I like to look at. When it. you got to take you them know? to the ER at three in the morning, it's a mistake. Oh, yeah, <laughs> no, actually, mistake. The, Jesus. My biggest mistake was um, he was about three or four, and I was on my way to work, and my wife said, "You know, I think he's got a fever. I want to give him some Tylenol." And I had just listened to this thing on NPR about how Tylenol causes all these problems in kids and i am not oh, an anti-vaxxer yeah. it's just i it's, you know people growing up i always thought tylenol was just like oh you can just take it and whatever but i guess it for some people sure. it can be hard on the liver and i was like let's not give them tylenol if we don't have to and i didn't think the fever was that high and then i get a call at work a couple hours later she's like call night call the ambulance i can't get through to 911 it was like oh. that day, like the cell phone service oh, didn't work. Shit. So I had to call and then she didn't tell me what was wrong. Is it just send an ambulance to the house? And uh, it turns out he had a febrile seizure. Oh my God. Yeah. So I still hear about that shit like three, four years later. That was a mistake, <laughs> but she didn't have to. Oh my to God. I bet, I, bet, <laughs> I bet you give him Tylenol real quick now. Uh, we do Advil, but yeah, it's the same. Oh, it's the same. I yeah I mean I regret that because and you know and we were freaked out because he didn't talk for like a day after. Jesus, that was a scary one. But how old was he when, he, when that happened? It's about three or four, so Jeez. it hasn't happened again. So I'm glad, but it's uh, and he's been making up for those silent that silent day ever since. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God, she just I mean 
I don't know how many words she's actually saying, but like, sure. but I mean, she bah, bah, commu- bah, bah. she's communicating. She, yeah, but yeah, but it's it's with her, it's more than that. You know what I mean? Like, and, mm-hmm. and that's that's another thing that I didn't, I, I was unexpected for me, right? Is like how they communicate without real English words, yeah. but like you just understand what they're saying. I mm-hmm. used to always see parents like be like, uh, like their child would be speaking gibberish, right? And, and they're like, oh yeah, yeah, she wants this, this, and this. Yep. I'm like, well, how do you know that? She's not even you saying do. that. You don't know that, like, but you do. You know, like you really, really, really do, and they really do. They really know how to communicate. That's a, that's another thing that I like. I did not expect is how well they're able to communicate and how quickly that happens. You know what I mean? Like yeah. she was started doing that like six months, and now she just doesn't. She just doesn't stop making sounds and mostly <laughs> screaming and yeah. banging pans together. But you know, it, it's sounds nonetheless. Yeah, and you know, those are sounds before I had a kid. I'd be like, shut the fucking kid up. But now it's like, ah, okay, he's happy. We're good. Yeah, exactly. You're like, yeah. you know what? If you're not making a sound, mm-hmm. there's an issue. Exactly. You know? It's, uh, yeah, it's like when you find a Sharpie cap on the floor without the Sharpie. That's oh, panic. <laughs> oh, man. She's really into like trying to squeeze hand sanitizer. Like uh-huh. she's, she's in this mode where she doesn't like to stay on the changing table on her back. Uh-huh. So like she'll like go and like the first thing she reaches for is like the the hand sanitizer and like she's trying to like squirt it all mm-hmm. all over herself and I'm like no 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 that's please, gonna no. burn <laughs> her mouth off. yeah right oh my god I can't even remember diapers yeah the good thing is you're gonna forget uh, that stuff are you planning on having more yeah for sure yeah. most definitely yeah most definitely I was an only child and hated it I didn't really that's a lie that's an that's an exaggeration didn't hate it. It was good at times because I like to be by myself. I, but I guess that's pr- product of being an only child. So it's chicken and egg, I guess. But I always wanted a sibling. And I'm like one of the only people that I know that is an only child. And so I, I, don't, want her to, I don't want her to have to go through that. I mean, I also now love kids. Like having her, I just want, I want it again. I want it all over. Yeah. I want, you know, and, uh, and I want her to experience having like a, a tag sure. team partner. You know, I was an only kid. I never wanted a sibling. I was just a selfish prick. All right, let's see. Uh, we'll just wrap these up. Friendships may change. Yeah. Oh yeah, friendships change. You don't know anyone that doesn't have kids anymore after for a while. I mean, yeah, right. Lose touch. Of, you know, or or at least talk to anyone that doesn't have kids. Yeah, exactly. Because they don't get it. You know, it's yeah, uh, right. That's the worst part. Yeah. Uh, there will be some regret. No shit. Um, <laughs> Um, okay. Oh, la- huh? Who is coming up with these? This list. This is oh, like a ton of regrets, man. <laughs> no, of course. These are like all so obvious, such obvious things. How are these going like unexpected? Let's see. And then the last one, which is my favorite of the whole list. You don't need half the stuff you bought. Oh, yeah. Oh my god. Holy shit! If I oh, could just my- get receipts for everything that's still in the box, that would be awesome. I, I, I've always been like a big, like, I need space in my apartment guy. That's also because we live in New York and everything yeah. is a closet. Uh, every apartment is a closet, mm-hmm. you know, it's just a glorified closet. So space is a, a luxury here, but I have now have a less of a, a necessity for space because we have none anymore yeah. in, the, in our apartment or like her stuff is just everywhere. And I'm just like, why does she need 70% of this stuff because she, she uses doesn't. each thing for four <laughs> seconds and then goes to the next thing. No privacy, no space, no, yeah. So, yeah, so I was, like I said, I was listening to your episode and you, one of the big parts of the episode was you talking about remembering the actual birth date of your daughter and oh, yeah. what your wife had to go through. So it sounds oh, yeah. like both of us had, like my wife had a C-section. Yep. And Mine yeah, and it was all like, Oh, this isn't, you know, the birth plan that they all focus on so much in all those classes is may as well just be toilet paper because 100%. They don't, I don't think they followed a single thing on that thing. No, they did. I mean, it, it didn't happen with us. We always knew that the probability of my wife having a C section was probably going to be high. Number one, because my daughter stayed breached pretty much the entire pregnancy. Oh, wow. But number two, my, my wife has an, has an autoimmune disease. Okay. So she was like a high risk anyway right and so we always knew that probably and our doctor knew that and Mm -hmm. the first mishap that through this birth plan that they call it out of whack was that 
they scheduled her C-section a week after her due date. So okay. we were like, we were like, well, like that doesn't make much sense. And then her due date came and my wife was like, yo, get this thing out of me, please. <laughs> and we went to the doctor and you know, her, her blood pressure started rising. They were like, all right, we got to get this thing out of you. She's like, yeah, I told you, get it out of me. Like, <laughs> I'm not damn telling you for weeks. Like I need it. I need it gone. Like, let's just get the show on the road. And it's weird. The, the biggest surprise of that for me was that they split you up when it's time to actually do the surgery, or at least they did that with us. I don't know if that was your experience, but like mm-hmm. they took my wife into the surge, into the operating room, yeah. maybe 15 minutes before me uh-huh. and like started prepping her and actually like cut her open before I even got in the room. And then like, they just like brought me in like right as the baby was about to oh, be wow. pulled out. And I was like, so I was like sitting there in like this little hallway outside the operating room, like freaking out. I know my wife is, is just anxious. Yeah. Her, her anxiety in general is just crazy. I'm like, yo, this is so fucked up. Like, I, I, how can they just let her be there by herself and go through, yeah. go through all this? You know what I mean? And then they, and so I thought that was like weird and a huge surprise for me. Mm-hmm. And then when she tells me that like everybody that was in the room, nobody knew each other they were all like and she, and she says it on on the episode yeah. that she was on she like gets in there and they're like they're introducing each other they're that introducing themselves to each sh- other i was like well, <laughs> i'd be freaking out i would be freaking out and you're like in there by yourself you're just you have this thing in you you want to get it out you have no idea what's going on it's just a wild experience all the way together like all around yeah, no, they let me in. Um, I was holding her hand while they were cutting and all that. And they put a sheet up between you so you can't see sure. exactly what they're doing. But the thing was, if I looked to the left, they had glass cabinets. So and I could see, see everything the, the they were project. doing. Yeah. And then I remember um, the kid came out and they said, Oh, we got a little Buddha. There was no way that thing was coming out normal. He was like just a big ass bowling ball, <sighs> all ahead and just round. I remember they called me over there, dad, over here. I'm like, all right. And they said, you want to cut the cord? I'm like, they already cut it. And I'm like, you mean yeah. trim it? And they looked at me like, what? I'm like, you already cut it. You want me to trim it? I'm like, yeah. I'm like, oh, yeah, sure. And holy shit, that was hard to cut. I mean, did you it cut did, yours? It was, it was, I, I, so I, I with the same experience. I thought when you cut the cord, it's like you're cutting it from yeah. the uh, like to separate. And like they brought her over and like put her, I always say they just put her on this plate, yep. right? Like next to me. And and then they just like went about doing their thing and they were like, Oh, you want to cut the umbilical cord? And I'm uh, same thing. I was like, uh, didn't you just already do that already? Yeah. <laughs> like, it's like cutting you know, through like, a tire. Yeah. It, it really, you know what? That's a great, a great analogy. It really is like cutting through like a thick rubber. Yeah. It's like a slimy tire. tire. Yeah. Yeah. But I remember after that though, they were like cleaning them up a little bit. And I remember he turned kind of like kind of dusky and like blue. Oh, Jesus. And I was like, okay, well, I'm always been like, if someone else, if someone in charge isn't freaking out, I'm not going to freak out. And I just figured maybe this is what they do. And then I remember she flipped him over onto his stomach and started like slapping him on the back and slapping his feet. Try, and I'm like, oh, he checked out. And she starts calling for help. And at the same time, I hear we're getting some bleeding over here. So I look over and I can see inside my wife because she's still wide open. And I guess they were having a problem with bleeding. And I had that thought for like a second, like, I'm going to fucking lose them both. Oh, my God. Everything worked out to be fine. He had to go into NICU to get some, I guess they had to actually, because, you know, when you get the C-section, you don't get that squeeze to get the liquid out of your lungs. Right, right. So he had to go, I guess they actually had to blow air into his, open up his lung sac. It just, oh, it sounds horrible. Jeez, please. Yeah, I don't. Oh, fuck if i was him after the first week i'd be like yeah i'm good uh, yeah right <laughs> he, he, he that's that's crazy he's he, just a small amount of time this kid's been through a lot this is a resilient yeah. this is a resilient little kid and then he's born to asshole parents so he's just <laughs> <laughs> he's screwed who then talk about him on podcasts yeah exactly I don't know. Yeah. I, I, Mike always talks about, it's like, what do you think that Owen's going to think when he listens to this? And I'm like, he's not going to, do you listen? Would you listen to shit? I, you would as an adult, like, I doubt he would listen to my stuff until I'm dead, <laughs> which the way I live could be next week. I don't know, but 
<laughs> it's because uh, I wouldn't listen to the stuff. You know, if I found out my dad had something, now I would totally do it and probably be all weepy and stuff. But at yeah. the time, and be like, "What a fucking dork," you know. And <laughs> you gotta do I, a fucking podcast. What's a podcast? Do you think your kid's gonna listen to yours? So I mean, I don't know. I I I, I am kind of doing the whole process. Also, as kind of a diary of her life, right? Sure. So like the two segments that I split the show into is like one is talking to dads, but the Mm -hmm. first segment is just going through like her weekly development. Right. And so it's kind of keeping also like an audio diary of her life in very real talk. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I can, if she doesn't listen to it, she's going to be forced to at, you know, a graduation party or a wedding or an engagement party, you know, cool. some or any time she pisses me off when she's a teenager, <laughs> it's gonna go right back to the time that she just had explosive diarrhea in some kid's pool, you know. Uh, yep, that's I got I got on tape. I, I was I got on tape. You know what I mean? You did that. You did that. Don't. Yep. It's uh oh man, on the pool thing. You know, I just realized I'm fucking. I'm gonna be 48 in a couple of weeks. I just realized a couple of weeks ago that remember like as a kid, they said, if you pee in the pool, it'll turn purple. And some, I yeah. just, I just found out that wasn't real. <laughs> yeah. yeah never, never real. I, if, if, if it turned purple, if it turned purple every time I peed in the pool, I, exactly. I would be as purple as my t-shirt right now. But anyway, so back to your show at the, you also, cause you were talking about the parts of the show. There's also, you always ask two questions for every dad. Uh, yeah. You know what? And since I'm on here, I'm going to throw them at you. Okay. Yeah, I'm gonna, I, I'm gonna what made you come up with those two questions? So it's very selfish reasons. I want to learn how to be a good dad. So I ask people what they, things that I want to know, you know what I mean? Like that, that's really, that's really the reason. But I also think that it's important. I mean, the two, the, the, the first question that I ask, and I'm going to throw it at you is, mm-hmm. is just what, what's your favorite experience with fatherhood so far or favorite thing about being a dad? <sighs> Well, I can be a good example of a bad example for you. Um, I honestly, I think I've never been like an overly selfish guy, but now I have something, someone I give a shit about to the point where I will do whatever the hell it takes to, you know, make it work. I didn't have that before because I had a lot of quit in me. Like, ah, fuck it, whatever. It just wasn't meant to be. Let's move on to the next thing. That's not an option now. Right. You know, he drives me nuts. You know, it's funny because I just started a new job this week. So I hadn't been working for a while. Congratulations. Oh, thanks. But I was amazed at how much I missed the little fucker. Wow. You know, it's been COVID. He's been at home for since March and I've been home that, you know, that whole time too. And it's like, oh, I got to get out of here, man. But now that I'm out, it's like, oh, I don't, you know, now when he wants to play, it's like, yeah, let's do that. Yeah. So I'm not taking it for granted um, like I did before because now it's like, shoot, I could have done all this stuff. So that's the biggest thing. I don't have a favorite thing about being a parent, but I think that's the one thing that stands out that's changed in me. Sure. And then that, that's why, that's why I, I don't just ask like, what's your favorite thing about being a dad? I want to know sure. about like, what's the best experience, you know what I mean? That, that has happened. So that could be, you know, like, because that is what I found is really what it's all about. It's these experiences that mm-hmm. you have within yourself and you kind of, not just your relationship with another human being and your ability to love and care for mm-hmm. and live for another human being, which I never understood how mm-hmm. that could be, but also the relationship with yourself mm-hmm. that you have, right? Your ex- experience with life changes. Well, on the flip side of that too, though, is, uh, is probably on a negative side is there's also, you know, as much as I care about the kid, there's also that fuck everybody else. hundred uh, percent. Uh, <laughs> so, 100%. and that's a selfish thing, but you know what, you know, they want to shut down to schools. Fine, do it. And I understand it sucks for like someone with a single income that has to be like a single parent. How the hell do you work with the kid at home? Sure. And I'm like, you know what, figure it out. Cause I don't want my kid catching this thing. hundred percent. And it's not productive, but it's uh you got to look out for what you got because 100 percent you got to protect kind of protect your own man yeah you know that's our job that's our number one job now yeah you know and the other one the second question that i always ask is the real selfish one is i ask that i ask dads for if they have a piece of advice that they would give to a dad behind them mm-hmm. in the fatherhood process fatherhood adventure yeah. what would that with that do not do this alone. Cause I've always been, I'm a, you know, I'm an isolationist 
I've always been, I can do this. Don't worry, but you'll go crazy, you know, reach out because what ends up happening is at least for me is you start resenting stuff and I start treating the people I love like an asshole. Yeah. Actually starting this podcast was nice because my, I've known Mike, my co-host since we were in first grade. So, wow. you know, before we start the show, we you always just, like sure. I mean, we go in and out, you know, cause well, cause you know, he got married and then, you know, he had his kids older than mine. So we kind of fell up, uh, you know, away from each other a little bit then, but it was just, it helps. Cause before every recording, we just shoot the shit. You know, we used to do this to get, you know, live and, sure. you know, we go get lunch or whatever. So that just helped because you have like a partner in crime with it. And, you know, sometimes it's going great and sometimes he's having an issue or the other way around or sometimes both things are growing great and we just make each other laugh. So trying to think that you can do this all your, on your own is just going to, you're going to hurt the people you care about. Yeah, it's a great, that's a, that's a really good one. Being a good one, uh, we're going to get to the bad dad, but. Before that, I want you to plug your show and anything you want to promote. Beautiful. Um, yeah, the show is Dad Hard with a Podcast. It is available on all podcast platforms that you can imagine. You can find anything that you can think of. I'm there. I'm there. I'm looking you right in the face if you, if you search for me. If you want to take a look at the entire catalog extremely easily without having to search, weddadhard.com. The entire catalog of podcasts is right there. You can go through everything. You can listen from the beginning of my journey as a, as a dad all the way to now through my daughter's first birthday. And try to, you know, if you're, if you're looking to be a better dad or learn anything about being a dad because there is no manual for this thing, you know, I have had 45 plus guests on the show, all dads, amazing. a couple of moms. Yeah. That have, that have added some really amazing insight uh, that are doing some really amazing things. It's definitely worthwhile to hear that if you don't like me, you will like them. So, uh, <laughs> you know, that's, that's a, that's a fact. So it's definitely, if you're, if you're a parent, new parent, dad, especially, and you're looking for an outlet to try to maneuver your way through this adventure, Give it a listen. It might it might spark some some help or cool. helpful tips and advice. I listened to the most recent one. It was entertaining and educational. So and it <laughs> set me down memory lane. So that was kind of cool. Just for, that was something I didn't expect. So thank you for that. Oh, thank you, of course. And I'll post links for you and contact info in the show notes. Oh yeah, absolutely. I always I always say I always say on my pod. If you want to connect on the fatherhood brotherhood. You can shoot us an email, dadhardpod at gmail.com. You can follow the Instagram at dadhardpod. And then the website, like I said, wedadhard.com. Boom. Perfect. <laughs> and I'm going to ask you again for that later. Now, we got a sponsor, Seattle Gummy Company. They make mocha shots. I wish I knew about this stuff when I had a one-year-old. Each of these gummies, each one is like worth like one cup of coffee as far as caffeine. And it hits you like five times faster. And it's way cheaper than getting coffee at Starbucks. And you don't get that jittery feeling that you get with coffee. And whenever you just feel down, I, I've used it. I bought a box of them myself. I had, I was introduced to them at a podcast festival and it just, they were great and they never disappointed. Uh, my buddy, Mike had quite a few too many and he got jittery, but that's just cause you know, the people at the table were like, please stop. But yeah, I mean, Mocha Shots definitely would have helped me out through a lot of those times. Email us a dad story. We will send you a sample. Um, if it's good, we'll read it on the episode. If it's really good, we may just have you come on and, you know, on the episode to tell it yourself. Use the link in the show notes. Use the code STANDUPDADS15. Get 15% off your order. Seattle Gummy Company. It is Stand Up Dads tested and approved. Now, our bad dad. So I came up with this, um, I didn't come up with anything, but I use this segment mainly because, you know, as a dad, we all fuck up and sometimes we feel get down on ourselves. So what I decided to do is focus on a bad dad in the news who's doing it worse than me so I can feel better than that guy. So this guy, Baton Rouge father, accused of making children cook crack cocaine after 10-year-old gets shot. Because... In a family, everyone has to chip in, damn it. <laughs> so, let's see. So, this Baton Rouge you gotta man. Carry your weight. You got to carry your weight exactly. around here. Exactly. You chip feet. in. Uh, let's see. Baton Rouge man arrested Tuesday. Uh, this just happened this week. Of making his, He was accused of making his three young children help him manufacture and sell drugs. 
So apparently the guy's 10-year-old son had been shot in the hand and leg during a drug deal. Evans, the dad, brought the child to the hospital for treatment, but only after hiding his drugs. Uh, his girlfriend was also arrested and accused of helping him in the drug business. So the detectives interviewed their children, and geez, this, is, this would drive you to drugs, 8, 9, and 10. So oh just gosh. bam, bam, bam. Who, sa- who all said, and these kids just narked their parents out like crazy. Uh, their See, dad that- told them not to call the police because he had to hide his dope. Oh my God! See, I don't, I don't know what's worse about this bad dad is, is that he's making the kids make and sell the drugs, or he did not teach them well enough not to snitch. You know what? Depending on the dad and where they're at on the bad dad scale, that answer is going to change. <laughs> Fuck, man. It's a little young to expect a kid not to snitch, but uh, let's see. The children also, yeah. You got to teach them not to snitch if you make them cook your crack for you. Man, that's uh, that's rule number one of the ten crack commandments, right there. You know, you just play him a little bit of Biggie Smalls, and he'll learn everything he needs to know. Oh man, let's see. Uh, the kids also described in detail their father's drug business, including a hole in the wall above the kitchen sink, where he would hide cocaine and heroin, covering it with duct tape, according to police. What kind of hiding place is covered with duct tape? I mean, come on. Oh my god. It's like the opposite of a hiding place that is like uh, things are stored here. Exactly. He's got to be a crackhead to do that shit. Children (laughs) told detectives about having to help their dad cook crack cocaine and cut heroin with other ingredients to maximize profits. And then this is my favorite line of the whole story. His daughter described a safe where Evans kept large amounts of cash and heroin. She said the safe code is 2836 because when weighing drugs... There are 28 grams in an ounce and 36 ounces in a kilogram. You know what? He taught his kid math. Oh, my God. <laughs> yeah. You know, he taught, he taught the kids, like, seven of the ten crack commandments. So, obviously, like, he listened to Biggie, but he just didn't relay the information all the way over, and that's what his problem is. That's, that's where he went wrong. Yeah, so, that's, uh, he's teaching them entrepreneurship. Uh, <laughs> He's teaching that the family has to stick together and work together. Yeah, so, again, I feel better about being a shitty dad because of this guy. Thank you. Oh, Jesus. Yeah. It's, uh, yeah, both were booked on second-degree second cruelty to juveniles and contributing to the delinquency of juveniles. So, I'm guessing... But not for selling drugs. Well, I think that was just for the... Uh, for, uh, regarding the kids. Uh, but, for the kids. Yeah, oh, okay, okay, um, okay, okay. I'm sure the other stuff will, it seems like charges come up. I don't know. I mean, I'm not a freaking lawyer or a cop, but it seems like uh, charges come up later. It's like, okay, we're charging you with this, but now I guess they're getting the evidence together. I don't. And now we're going to charge you with these other 19. Exactly. But right off the bat, it's like, okay, we got to get CPS in here. I don't don't think I could get my kid to sell crack for me. (laughs) Ah, no, you know what? I don't, I don't, I don't know if I, I could do that either. I, you know, I, I would just have to work harder at it myself. Yes. I mean, I don't think I would trust him. It's like, cause yeah. he's seven and I don't think he knows the difference between a 20 and a 10. I'd probably lose money. <laughs> it's, uh, I don't know. Well, tell us what you think. Email us the standup dads at gmail.com. Subscribe to our show. It'll pop up in your feed every Sunday. And somehow it helps us. I don't know. Oh, and we have a website, uh, stand-up-dads.com. Check it out. There's a blog there that I'm neglecting. If you want to see what Mike and I look like, it's on there. It's not pretty. Well, Mike's pretty. I say it in the beginning of every show. Mo, give me your plugs again. As always, if you listen to the show, you'll know this already. But to connect on a fatherhood brotherhood, shoot us an email at dadhardpod at gmail.com. Follow us on Instagram at dadhardpod. And if you want to get an introduction to the show and don't feel like using search bars on your Spotify or Apple Podcasts or CastBox or Luminary or God knows what else you use, you can go directly to the website, wedadhard.com, and the entire catalog is right there. You can listen to all 43 current episodes out right now, including a couple of bonus episodes that I, that I did as well. So it's a total of 
45, 47, um, and, and experience kind of the, the entire first year right now of, of fatherhood. Very cool. And if you want a picture drawn of a dad teaching his three kids how to sell crack, check out my uh, co-host who's not here, his, his, what do you call it? A website. Uh, it's pencilforhire.com. The link will be in the show notes as will Mo's. He can. He did the art for the our logo. Also, he has a comic book. It's called Clumsy Love. There's a link there. He's not here, so fuck him. But buy it anyway. Check out Eye of Mungambo. It's by Doug Gray. It's hilarious. It's a graphic novel. You got nothing better to do with the pandemic. Check. Click that link. Get that. Again, Seattle Gummy Company. Use the link in the show notes and put the code STANDUPDADS15, get 15% off your order, and you will have energy when you need it. And email us your dad stories. We'll send you a sample. And finally, get my side project, The Gag on This Podcast. That's run by my buddy, Big Nick. We interview comics and have a great time doing it. Uh, we've had some good ones on recently. I'm going to be back on next week. Check it out. And Mo, I wanted to say thank you very much for coming on and hopefully Mike and I can get on your show. Yeah, absolutely. We'll have to have to set that up. Thank you very much for having me. I really appreciate it. Uh, listen, I'm, I'm down to rock with any, any dad that's trying to do this podcast thing and, and spread their stories. We need more dads spreading stories no, around. No, we so don't. I appreciate what you guys do. <laughs> <laughs> well, not if they're making their kids cut exactly. crap. Otherwise. I want to hear his podcast. <laughs> oh my God. I'm going to have to find him and get him on mine. Sometimes you got to slap a bitch to get her to do it right. And it's like, yeah, I want to hear what this guy has to say. It's, it'll be like watching scared straight, you know? (laughs) Oh my God. It's amazing. On that note, we will talk to you guys next week. Thing I want to say is thank you all for coming. Bye-bye.